What's up, everybody? Josh Barton here, voice of Dragon Ball Z's Majin Buu and other things. Listen, I just got done talking to my partner, Keys Andrew. And if you haven't listened yet, you need to start. Subscribe, like, do all the things you know you're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, you, you won't regret it. But if you don't do what I say, I'll turn you into chocolate pizza! <laughs> Keith Andrew, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. For people who want to know what is the Keith Andrew Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of word disabilities and disabilities and never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them but labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's approved about me. It's down out to something. So that being said, I'm here with one of my favorite actors and soon to be good friends. You know, I'm here with the one and only, the original, Majin Boo. What's up? <laughs> now, the, the question I want to ask you, if for our audience who don't know any... Uh, not highlighted or educated in backgrounds, what can you tell us about what started your career in voiceovers? Well, uh, Majin Buu, Dragon Ball Z started my career. It was my first job in voiceover and um, boy, that jumped it off, didn't it? No, I agree. Now, do you just do Fat Buu or do you do the other Boos? I do Fat Buu, Kid Buu, and Evil Buu. Justin Cook is super boo. Oh, that's uh, really cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a funny chant going around. You know, like, uh, I keep my show PG, PC 13, but I like to push it to 14. I keep messing up with ratings because I don't want it to water it down. I want everyone to express themselves and have fun. But well, for this one, I will make an exception. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the chant that Mons and Boo says. Are you familiar with that? Which one? It's like, now you're putting me on the spot. It's like, Mons and Boo, big bad Boo, big bad motherfucker. I haven't heard that one. Oh, it's really, he says it so fast that I was like, he didn't just say it. So it's, okay, okay, two adults. And my bullshit, the kids, you didn't just say that. But Who did I, that? I have no idea. It's, I thought it was you. I thought maybe it was Justin Cook. I don't know who did it, but it was really, I can't keep a straight face every time I hear about it. Oh, I'm going to have to search that. I haven't seen it. Well, I should have done it. <laughs> well, if you would do it, what would it sound like? Martin Boom. What What's the next bit? It's a Monson Boo, Big Bad Boo, Big Bad Motherfucker. Yeah, but he says it so. Big Bad Boo, Big Bad Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who came up with it, but it's, he says it so fast. I don't think they really heard it until they were done. Like, there's, I'll give you an example. It was King Kai. Uh, King Kai uses the F word. I wasn't aware of that. You slipped one by, huh? <laughs> slipped one by, did he? Well, he, he, he says it so fast. It's when he's in um, the upper wall tournament and he yells at um, West Kai. He calls him a sort, you know, like I said, it's uncensored, sort uh -huh. uh, fucking half pint. But he says it so fast. And it's like, he didn't just say that. I've not heard that one. I'll have well, to go back and check that out. After we're done, I will definitely show you that. It's really okay. funny. But like I said, my show is usually PG, PG-13, 14, 14. But I like the expression of uncensored freedom of speech, self-expression. It's all about having a good time and, and just expressing yourself. And it's not saying, oh, well, he's saying bad words. I don't want to be on his show anymore. It's kind of like... I want you to express yourself and just say, this is who I am. This is not a mask. 
But, you know, <laughs> the next question. No, absolutely. And as we're talking about off the air, I had um, two demo interviews. I'm trying to get them back. I'm trying to get Eric Vale and Kyle Herbert. One of my favorite episodes, I asked Kyle Herbert to do some voices like PyCon and Gohan. It's like, okay, where does PyCon stand on, um, I don't know, um, for example, a Black Lives Matter? Well, can Gohan say something about Goku and can he do West Kai? And it was so much fun. And then Kyle just says, yeah, I, I, you can't use the interview. Because Fun and Mason will get a really upset. I'm like, I'm not making money, but I'm, okay, whatever. But I'm trying to get Kyle back on the show. I would love to do that. Doesn't have to do the voices. And like for you, you don't have to do the voice if you don't want to. But it is fun. And it's for entertainment. But like I said, no money's making off of my network. I wish. <laughs> I'd be raking it in. But I, anyway. But uh, recently, I got um, Chuck who does 17 and I got pan on the show. And those are two of my favorite episodes. And we're actually talking about doing a group episode. I would love to have you a part of that. I'd be happy to be a part. <laughs> you have an idea. Uh, so I got you. I can tell you after on uh, the next question I want to ask you is I'm going to change up the format. So I'm going to ask you some hard hitting questions and I want you to throw it back at me. Okay. So, so the first one I want to ask you is, everyone knows you're a professional actor. You're amazing as Monson Boo. You are the one and only Monson Boo. And I'm not kissing your butt or anything. But the mm. question I want to ask you is, what is holding you back from being the person you want to be? Ooh, uh, you know what? Nothing. I don't let things hold me back. I'm, uh, I'm moving forward. I am the person that uh, I'm supposed to be. I, uh, I, I trust that. I accept that. And uh, I, I think that uh, it might help others to, uh, to have that mindset a little more, to uh, accept where you are, uh, appreciate it, and, uh, uh, but continue to move forward. No, I agree. You shouldn't let the past hinder you or... Say, you know, I made a, for me, I, I make a horrible habit of doing things half-assed. And I always tell people, don't follow my footsteps. If you're going to do something, you're either going to do it right or you're not going to do it at all. Because say you're in a half-assed mood and someone walks through the door and that person will automatically, because you get the first 10 seconds of making a good impression on somebody. If someone sees it with the I don't care attitude, and later on in life, you come across the same person, they're going to be like, I saw you at blah, 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 blah. I can say Toys R Us. Toys R Us is out of business. I saw you at Toys R Us and you had the I don't care attitude. Why should I hire you for this if this is what I'm going to get? So don't do anything unless you're 110% positive and willing to make the effort. No question. You're absolutely correct. And you know, for passing it to the same question I want to ask you, it's like the same thing for Mons and Boo doing the voice. If he didn't if he didn't have the I don't care attitude or I'm gonna do it half ass, it wouldn't be that good and people wouldn't take to it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean you could that's a character that you you can't approach any way but one hundred percent committed. Right. I mean, he doesn't turn people into chocolate and eat them, uh, doesn't turn people into candy and make them into a house. Uh, he, that's not something you do uh, half cocked. Right. Right. You got to go full steam. Same thing with uh, whatever else you're doing in life. Um, as you say, you, you've experienced when you when you don't commit 100 percent. You don't get 100 percent out, do you? No, I agree with you. How about it's similar to the first question, but have your strengths help you succeed? My strengths? Yes. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, growing up, I loved to watch television and um, mimic the sounds and the, the voices and things that I'd heard. And, you know, uh, I've been blessed 
to uh, be able to do that pretty accurately and well. And it has afforded me a, a decent, a decent uh, place in this world we call entertainment. It's true. Now, the complete opposite of that is, as we were mentioned before, and as I mentioned, has your failures ever hindered you? Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I could go back and look at a lot of things that failures hindered me. But, you know, failures are relative. Hindrances are, are relative. Um, I kind of I like to think of. Uh, I don't like to think of failing, really. I don't really think that there's a fail. I don't think that there's a mistake. Uh, there's always a better choice. There's always another choice, but there's always a better choice. So uh, like I was saying before, you know, being in the moment, trusting that you are where you're supposed to be at that time, trusting that you've done the best that you can with the circumstances that you've, you've had made the best choice that you could at the time, even if you could have made a better choice. Well, if you can understand that, you're even better off. Hey, you know what? I could have made a better choice then. I'll try to make a better choice next time. And, you know, making that better choice next time. If you don't, then, uh, you're going to continue to uh, make the less than um uh, the the lower percentage choices, you know what I mean? No, absolutely. So that that's my opinion. No, it's a Zoom. It's kind of freezing. Are you still there? I can hear you, but your camera is kind of frozen. <laughs> All right, perfect. Now now you're back. <laughs> now here we are. <laughs> oh, perfect. And when I look down, I'm not breaking eye contact. I'm just looking at a script. Usually I just say it. I like have a little index card at my top five. I'm like, oh, let's change up the format. But this one you yep. might find interesting. The next question I want to ask you is, who are you really? And who is behind the mask that you show to the rest of the world? Who am I really? Uh... You know, I'd like to say that I, I am really me. You know, what you see is what you get. That's what I try to do. You know, I don't try to put on airs. I don't try to put on a mask. Um, now, I am a performer. I am an actor. So that is all about putting on masks and, uh, and fronts. But I, I do it uh, as the job requests. I don't, I try to keep that separate from uh, my everyday life. I think most people that know me would tell you that, um, that what you get, what you see is what you get. And uh, I don't think that many people would have a complaint with uh, what, what you get from me. I'm pretty honest. And, uh, you know, I'm also a, a good person. I try to try to be, I think. And um, I get teased by my friend, Chris Rager for being too nice sometimes. I hear he, you know, for me, unfortunately, I have a lot of people say I wear my emotions on my sleeve, so I, I don't have a good poker face. But mm -hmm. what we have in common is nicer people always get walked on. It, it there is uh, there is a tendency for that to happen. However, um, for me, uh, I had a formative event happen to me when I was growing up. Uh, in junior high school, uh, I was walking home. I mean, not home. I was walking in between classes in junior high. Excuse me. <coughs> Don't worry. I have that effect on people. <laughs> nah, it's not you. <laughs> it's the cigarettes and whiskey. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I was walking in between classes from choir to um, the next class. Class, And uh, one of the, I was walking next to a group of guys that I was in choir with. And uh, I really don't remember what was happening on our walk. I think maybe uh, I was being uh, viewed as more of a tag along and, and maybe a, a pest uh, than, than, you know, anything else. Well, about this time, uh, one of the guys, about six foot five, 350 pounds. Uh, he turned around and he just pushed me in the chest and I went rolling down this hill. 
And everybody was changing classes and everybody saw me get pushed and roll down this hill. Well, I'm sure it wouldn't have really been surprising to anyone if I would have just gotten up and gone on about my way and been the, the little white kid who got pushed. And, uh, but for some reason I got good, good and mad, but before I, I stopped rolling. And, uh, when I did stop rolling, I got right back up and I ran right at this guy. And when I got to him, I bam, pushed him right in his chest and he didn't move, not an inch. He looked down at me and looked at his friends. And he goes, this little white boy is crazy. And from that point on, we became best friends. And I hung out with them all the time. And they hung out with me. And not that anyone ever really messed with me before or picked on me or anything like that. But I, I definitely never got picked on ever again so i took the point to uh, i took that time to make it clear that i may well let me back up i was definitely gonna get my tail handed to me <laughs> if my man datrell who was still a best friend of this day and he was a a, a groomsman at my wedding and um he he could have torn me up no problem with a flick probably, but he didn't. Uh, but I just wanted to make it clear that, you know, whether that was the case or not, I was not going to be pushed around and, and bullied and teased and things like that. And, you know, he needed to be told that too. Uh, he, he likes to, he likes to get mad at me when I tell that story to people, but you know, I like to tell it because we're, we're great friends, you know, it, uh, you know, he was a kid. We were teenagers, you know, we we're young teenagers, barely teenagers, if, and you're still learning things. Not everyone has the same upbringing and viewpoints and things. So we were, we were learning and, and we learned. We learned how to stand up for ourselves and not everybody is the same and we can all get along. So, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in all that. And I don't put up with it if I'm around people uh, who, who experience it and you can, you can ask people and they'll tell you the same thing. No, I agree with you 100%. And now, Lord, I listen to your voice. Are you from Texas? I'm from Louisiana. Born and raised. I was listening. It's like, you really have a strong Texan voice and actually it is a nice voice. Thank you very much. I can go, it go, I go in and out of it. If I start talking about crawfish or Earl or the bayou, you know, that, that Cajun come out of me. Cool. Shot. <laughs> so do you ever fun? I wanted to tell you about, you know, actually while on the subject, um, when my dad was a kid, you know, if you lost the fight, you would get your ass kicked by your parents and tell you go back out and finish the fight. <laughs> Uh, being from Louisiana, I am familiar with that uh, practice. Yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware. Luckily, I never got into fights. I didn't have to get into fights. You know, and that was one thing. Uh, you know, early on, when I had my little uh, altercation with Daniel, we it was clear. I was Nobody pestered me. But uh, from that point on, it was clear that I wouldn't. I wasn't messing around. So what we're going to do now is take a quick Kamasa break. And with the last eight minutes, I'm going to pass it over to you when we come back. Now we're back from the Kamasa break. The following is brought to you by Life of a Fighter. If you're into eating and drinking healthy, definitely you're a life of a fighter. Also, it's brought to you by H.B. Gibson, home of the X-Zone, get into the zone. As everyone knows, today is Monday Night Roar. So it's available on the USA Network, 8 o'clock, I think it's 5 o'clock West. Definitely check it out. So I was going to say the following is brought to you by Disabilities, with everything that you accomplish in your life. 
having worked with people with disabilities and for people with disabilities who want to follow in your footsteps, what would be your words of wisdom passing the show over to you? Well, um, I have worked with uh, people with disabilities. Um, you know, I don't necessarily consider it a disability because I was around uh, these people and I saw them perfectly capable. And, um, you know, that's kind of my viewpoint. I don't, I don't really see, I know it may sound cliche and all, you know, bubbly and stuff, but I really don't see disabilities. I, I just see, you know, hey, got to do it different. You know, like uh, I was on the Barney tour, right? It was my first job out of acting school and uh, I toured the world and uh, some of my castmates were little people and uh, they, they have a disability, uh, you know, technically. Um, and I, I learned more about what those disabilities are, are, uh, you know, alternate capabilities, as some people say, right? Alternative capabilities are... Um, I, I'm not 100% up on all of the proper terms and everything. So p excuse me if I misspeak. But, um, you know, again, I, I was hanging out with some some of the little people and we'd go to, to malls and people would stare and even say things. And, you know, sometimes, like I said, I'd, I'd get, but hey, take a picture. It'll last longer, you know. And then my friends, be, they, they, don't worry about it. Don't worry. I mean, no, I'm not worried about it. But they're not going to talk to you like that. They don't talk to me like that. So, you know, I don't put up with that. Now, there's a funny Instagram that I could post. If I, if, sorry, brain fire. If I can find it again, I would definitely show you to you. It's some guy who was in New York City walking in the street. You may have seen it. And a woman walked past. I was like, hey, yo, I'm walking here. And the woman's like, we don't talk like that in New York City. We don't do that. Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I didn't mean any offense. So he takes two steps away. Hey, yo, forget about it. What the fuck does tell you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. That's classic. I love uh, the old uh, taxi driver, right? Taxi cab. What, what was that? Uh, I can't remember the name of it. De Niro. What? Pacino. Oh, yeah, yeah Al Pacino. Anyway. Right. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. <laughs> you know, it's funny, you know, actually, my other question I want to ask you is, who are your inspirations? You know, for me, I use my dad for an inspiration. You know, he um, worked with Tony Bennett's wife. I uh, had Pisa was Al Pacino. He was on um, the parade of Canyon Heroes with John Glenn. And before he lost his freaking mind, uh, Rudy Giuliani. Um, you know, my dad met, so he had, you know, he had the way in, we met the Ray and bloggers. He had a Wesley Snipes in his class. Um, oh. Around, I think j -Lo was around the corner from where the school was. So my right. dad met so many great people. But what about you? Has there any been any big celebrities that you met? It's like, I woke up to you. Now we're working. Now we're friends. Uh, you know, um, boy, it, it, being on the conventions, I get to meet a lot of people and, and talk to them and have conversations. You know, I'm a wrestling fan. So uh, I've had some, I've had some cool conversations with random wrestlers, Mark Henry, uh, Christian, Christian Cage. Nice guy. Yeah, totally. Totally great guy. Um, you know, Sammy Guevara, uh, Young Bucks, uh, you know, Jake the Snake, um, Jerry the King Lawler, you know, just a bunch of, I, I love it. It's it's a cool, a cool thing. And all of a sudden I'm in, I'm amongst these people hanging out and it's kind of, kind of surreal. Kind of surreal. No, I give you an example. I haven't got the chance to meet one of the most beautiful women I ever met, Trish Stratus. And I walked right up to her and I'm like, I had a brain fart, like, sorry, starstruck. And I was like, this is so beautiful, you know, 20 years away. I watched her whole career. 
The next, I met Amy DeMond, Cameron Ness, Malena Perez. I met Malena, Malena, I don't know how to, uh, to correct the way to say it. I call her Malena, uh, two times, uh, Middletown, and then at Big Event. I met my good friend, Asi Mazzaro, you know, three times before she passed away, unfortunately. Oh, you met her two times? No, I was just saying peace. Peace to Ashley. She's no longer with us. Yep. No, I would love to see her again. And there's some people where I'm like, I have my top five. I have to go see this person. I'll give me an example. If it was you, um, Pan, Anti-17, and there's some other people, I have a top list I have to go see. It doesn't matter how many times I go see you guys. I have to go see you. But there's other people where you meet once or twice or kind of like, okay, you know, I met them. And not to sound like an asshole or anything. I met them. But when you meet somebody, you feel a connection. You're like, you're, you're friendly. And you're up. You're like Christian. Oh, Jay, he was really nice. And you can, or John Morrison, you can feel a connection when you talk to someone. You know, they're giving you your full attention. And you're like, this person really cares. But then you yes. meet other people that are just kind of like, okay, nice to see you. If I see you again, great. If not, whatever, there's the door. And I hate people like that. Mm. Uh, I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I, try to, uh, I try to be mindful of that and try to stay available and, and kind. Um, I also am aware of, of some other people that are in different positions that I am. And uh, maybe it's not so easy for them to, uh, to talk, whether it be a personal thing or, or maybe they just, they got things to do and, and they don't, you know, they got to go or, you know, maybe they are just a jerk. Gross. Say la vie, as we say in Louisiana, say la vie. No, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up, my last question for you is when I first approached you to be a guest in my talk show, what made you say yes? How do you feel now? And would you recommend it to all your co-workers? Okay. Well, the reason that I said yes is because I thought you were someone else. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm teasing. I like to talk to people and, uh, and uh, you sent me the video of uh, you and Chuck and, uh, and Elise. So I thought, well, you know, I guess I could take a few minutes to talk to my partner. But yeah, and it's a good, it's also a good, uh, good cause too. I didn't, I didn't uh, know that you had a disability or anything. Uh, and so, but when you said that uh, it was part of your uh, mission statement in, in your, your program, I was like, yeah, let's do that. I'm all about that. I'm all about supporting that. Oh, absolutely. Now, wrap no, up. Actually, I had a brain fire. I said I actually the same person twice. <laughs> Sorry, start struck. Yeah. So, wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege to have me as a guest. Everyone can follow the Key Fancy Network on all social medias. And as I always say, I'll catch you later.